under the guise of confessing and purifying her conscience, an infatuated woman induces a holy brother to unwittingly provide the means to satisfy her longings. The Ecumenical Council, what do we go? Monsignore Filippo Arcudi, head of the diocese of the Caracciolini Fathers, arrived in Rome to attend the third session of the Ecumenical Council on a Friday morning at 10.42 a.m. His rank entitled him to the services of a secretary, so he had brought his nephew, Vincenzo, along. Vincenzo had been in the Monsignore's service for years, but this was his first visit to the big city. Vincenzo! Let's go. Now, young man, what about my room? That's what I'm trying to find out. Operator, please telephone the Foro Romano. We consider that a splendid hotel. Just yes, what yes, you want I go there right now. The personnel is all male, including the telephone girl. Pardon, is this the desk clerk? Don Collini speaking. Are my reservations still reserved? Absolutely hopeless. Eh? One Monsignore coming by taxi? But every room's taken, absolutely. You see the way things happen? Go ahead, Monsignore. Take it taxi. Some. Hurry. Taxi. Okay. Why? Don't you like it? You can't go around the hotel in that. I can't do more than wear mourning, right? You told me to have it dyed black. And so it shrank a bit. It certainly did. That Monsignore in 209 wants a leather hassock in his room. He saw one in Monsignor Paletta's. Hello? I wouldn't yes. give in on the hassocks. You haven't really if the word gets round, you'll we'll need a hundred. Send them out to the Coliseum. <laughs> How many now? Sent over a Monsignore with his secretary. I don't have a room to put them in. Why don't you put them in yours? Then you can sleep with your wife again. You're my wife, after all. Pull down your skirt. It's indecent. My dear, what's the difference if you stay with me or not? They made me discharge all the maids and get men instead. They made me take down the pictures and put up crosses. Now, what do you want me it's to do? It's not a hotel anymore. In fact, it's a cloister. Excuse me, sir. What is it? Could you spare a moment inside? Be right with you. Stay behind there, eh? I suppose one day this ecumenical council will finish. Ah. And will you last this one out? The last took 35 years. Good day. Vincenzo. There's a double room and bath reserved in my name. Here's the reservation slip and my identification. <laughs> I trust there's no difficulty about it, hmm? Young lady, I'm talking to you. Can't you see that? Yes, I can see that. Then tell me what I ask, hmm? Is there any difficulty about the reservations I have for a double room with bath, hmm? Now tell me, senor. Talk to me. Oh, no, 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 senor. <laughs> there's no difficulty now. We expected you, and when you expected person, you can't let that person go somewhere else. Fine, fine, let's see the room. What are we waiting for now? 303. Thank you. Thank you. 304, thank you. Thank you. I'll take the other one. Thanks. Uh, just a moment. Excuse me. Um, you're Franciscans, aren't you? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Franciscans. 
Then you swore a vow to poverty, huh? To yeah, poverty and, and, and to modesty. <laughs> and fine, lots of other things. Fine, fine. St. Francis has said any brother must take all he possesses and give it to the poor. I heard it's marvelous. No brother has two tunics. Or two pairs of sandals. Not a purse either. Nothing at all. Nothing. No, nothing. nothing. If two tunics are too much, three rooms for six is a luxury. Almost the same. Think of poor St. Francis of Assisi. Am I right? It's all fixed. Everything's ready, Monsignore. Ready? <laughs> Vincenzo? Purio? Monsignore and his secretary in 303, the bags. Let's go. Yes. Brother Siberio will be the doctor. Yes. You'll take Brother Domenico. Yes. And don't forget to set the alarm. A first call at midnight. The second is me at two. Fours when I wake. Call me at six. And me at eight. With coffee and cake. My clock. Yes. Good morning. Morning. Dogmatic tenacity, uh, dogmatic, spelled like stigma, GMA, it's, it's the same thing. Besides, I must now advise you of the importance, uh, the importance, uh, hold it a minute. Hello? What good news? Oh. Uh, tell me, is this room you got for him next to mine? Where is it? Fourth floor. I see. Hmm. Well, better than nothing, I'm grateful. Oh, Monsignore, the pleasure is all ours. You'll be moved to 412th on the fourth floor. Must be blind. 
I'll show him now. Sir, you deliver this letter personally, wait for the answer. And if you have five or ten minutes, spend the time walking around the rectory. The fourth stone. Excuse me, I'm sorry. The blanket. Oh, dear. Give it to me, sir. Go ahead now. What are you waiting for? A little money for taxi fare or the streetcar. Cabs at your age. Walk, my boy, walk. It's very good for you. Put up that sign. Do not disturb. Yes, Uncle. Uh, hmm. Hmm. May I come in? No, there's a sign on the door. Oh, yes, I know it's there. Well? And it's much better that way. So no one will disturb us. Take it over at once. After all, what do oh, people senor. think? I don't know what to do. There's a problem I can't solve. It's so difficult. Oh, believe me, I tried everything, but mm, I don't know where I to understand. turn. understand. Yes, yes. You want to make a confession. Just a minute to get my stove. Oh, no, I didn't come here to confession. What? Tell me what it is. You see, you, only you can help me, Father. If I mention it to my husband, it would be terrible. Oh. And I can't face the other man. Yes, I get my stove. But my conscience is clear. Listen, but you just said there's another man. What kind of a man is he? It's your nephew, Monsignore. My nephew? Vincenzo? Yes. But what has Vincenzo done to you? He molests, he persecutes me. Persecutes you? 
Vincenzo? How? With his eyes. Up to now. Since you arrived, there hasn't been a moment when that man has taken his eyes off my body. <laughs> no, he's just a boy, Vincenzo. No, no, my dear. No, don't be silly. This is just your imagination. Hmm, imagination, Monsignore. He undresses me in his mind. He goes around stripping me. <gasps> oh, I'm sorry, but I had to explain to you, didn't I? It's obscene. He winks at me. He's fresher each day. That pig. Sometimes I start going up a staircase. I look down and... <gasps> Oh, my goodness, this fortune you decided to tell me. I'm telling you the absolute truth, Monsignor, and there's more. The things he's done to me. The room clerk is on his side now. I'm sure he's paid the man a bribe. Don't worry, that's impossible. The point is, your nephew has fixed things so that he has the room next to mine. And now I can only take my clothes off in the dark. Uh. Because it's not enough for him peeking through the keyhole, he made three more holes in my door. Three? <laughs> Three. I stop them up and he unplugs them. I stop them up and he unplugs them. I stop them up and... Uh... Yes, yes, you stop them up and he unplugs them. Uh... Monsignore, you must do something about this. I... I've done everything I know how to make your nephew understand, but, but he doesn't want to. Now, you must talk to him. Yeah? He must let me alone. And he must not take advantage because my husband is terribly occupied and doesn't notice anything. It's impossible. I can't believe it because I know him so well. After I brought the boy up, you know, and I'm his confessor. Look. My dear, he's 22. And despite his 17 months of military service in Paris, he doesn't... I mean, he doesn't... <laughs> He doesn't know anything about the women, he told me. I see. Ah, yes. Vincenzo wants to be pure when he gets married. Monsignore. Vincenzino changed his mind. First thing to do is change his room to somewhere else, then punish. Oh, but no, no, Monsignore. I didn't ask you that. I stick for plugs in. Please talk to the boy about it. You just tell him all that I said. And I'm sure that Vincenzino will understand what he has to do, Father, what his duty lies. And if he doesn't, he's really an idiot. Come in, Uncle. I delivered the letter. Anything I can do for you? I came downstairs a little earlier for you, but I saw the Do Not Disturb sign. Uh, that's the bathroom. I really find this satisfactory. It's small, but comfortable. The man there is very nervous. <laughs> I think he's a priest from the Sistine Chapel. A priest? From the Sistine Chapel, eh? Oh, why are you hitting me? <laughs> Tonight you'll go back to sleep in my room. Myself, you're late. I'm going to meeting in a little while, so oh, it's you. Yes. What's the matter? Vincenzo again? Yes. What's he done to you now? Look the worse. Worse. Oh. Worse than that? Worse. What did he do? Did he did he did he suggest anything? Much worse. <laughs> I must do something. <laughs> I didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. No, I didn't. You're going to burn in hell, you sinner. You'd better confess. Last night you tried to break into our bedroom. No, I yes. didn't. Yes. 
Because you knew she sleeps alone and her husband sleeps on the floor below. No. You stay here. You listen, Vincenzo, you confess because I'm going to break your head sometime. It's not true, I swear. She's lying. Don't you trust me? Trust you, believe me. But why should this woman make up this fantasy? All right, explain to me. You say it's not true, right? There are lies, but why should you do such a thing? You try to explain to me if you can. Why? Why? Tell me why. It's just uh, because. Just because. Hmm? Well, I think Shenzo, the first time I believed you. But now I don't. But for the moment, I'm going to forget about it. To err is human. But listen, Vincenzo. The third time, no. If that woman comes again to me and complains about the slightest thing you do. Listen, I'm going to kill you. I'll excommunicate you. I'll fire you. And then I'm going to send you back home. Understand? Hmm? Understand? Mm. Understand? Mm. I was stupid. Yeah. I understand. It's all plain. You're going to finish your steak? And for me. Oh, my son, at your age, you must eat. You need all your strength. to go. Excuse me. Listen, after all now, can't you wait until I finish this little piece of bread? How can I find my sister's letter in all this mess? But, uh, what? Wait. Whose letter? Wait. Ah, please, that's please. what you want. Your sister, my sister-in-law. No, my sister, your grandmother. Oh. Well, where is it? Oh, please. Who's there? Mm -hmm. Let me in. It's nothing. Nothing. It's I no one. To you. One of those crazy Francis. Just for a moment. Senor, I must talk to you. Is this a time to go looking for your sister's letter? Hello. I want to speak to Monsignore Arcudi. Hello, is that you, uncle? Did I wake you? Is it you? Oh, Vincenzo Vincenzino. Oh, I was so worried about you. What happened? Where are you? Will you come and get me? I got lost. Lost? Look at you stupid donkey. Please come, because I'm lost. Hello. Uh, uncle, I'm a sick man, and I beg you to have a little mercy. You mean in the hospital? I'm not there. 
Crazy. What's that? I think I've gone crazy. Crazy? I don't mean I'm mad like an idiot or a fool. I'm a maniac, but it's sexual, Uncle. Sexual? Maniac? I misled that poor girl. So meek, so pure. You mean the one here at the hotel called Beatrice, eh? Yes, Beatrice, that's who it is. Let me stay in your room tonight, Uncle. I mustn't stay alone. Hello. You must let... All right, all right, I understand. And I'm lost. Won't you please come and get me here? Yes, but where are you? I want the name of the state to tell the cab. I'll come and get you. I'm not sure what it's called. Hello. Hold on. I'll ask someone. Uh, Just a minute, Uncle. Excuse me, where are we? Via Veneto. Monsignore, I must speak to you. It's important. About, um... Alone, in private. Get in there. Wait for me and don't move. Don't you move. Vincenzo, Vincenzo, open the door and come out so that now I can kill you. Vincenzo, come out and I'll kill you first before her husband gets here and tortures you for it. Her husband was in the room with her when you tried to attack her. Is there her husband? Yes. Vincenzo, Vincenzo. Mm -hmm. Come outside. Come out immediately. Are you coming? No. All right. You'll have to come out sometime and I'll be here. I don't move from this place. You hypocrite. You hypocrite. You betrayed the little Judas. You, you're a Judas. I brought him up and all he does is betray my teachings. He confesses his purity to me and all the while behind my back he was plotting to pursue his quarry to Grotta Ferrata and capture her. Persecuting and following her. He follows her as she goes to see her mother-in-law to the house of her mother-in-law in Grotta Ferrata. Sadist! While that poor girl searches for safety and peace, she can't find it. Where can she go? America, China! Mm -hmm. No more. Murder me if you like, but let's get this straight. I'm innocent, Uncle, but now I'm going to prove it to you. <laughs> You're hurting my mouth, Uncle. Can't we talk this over calmly? What is this Grotta Ferrata that I'm supposed to have gone to? Is it a cave or a place? A place. I'm ignorant of it, so how am I supposed to have gotten there? How? Oh, oh. Very simple. How on a street car? Tram. What number? 42. Is that so? And how am I supposed to have paid my fare, since you never gave me any money? <laughs> you stole it from me, that's what you did, after you gave me the sleeping pills. And after I arrived in Grotta Ferrata, pursuing this lady, how did I get to find the house she stayed at? 
There must be more than one. There is, sure. But there's only hey, one conductor. that has her husband's name on it. Hey. Carlone. But to get in the house, how did I accomplish that? You climbed over the fence like any other criminal. Found yourself no, a ladder no, no, and no, no, climbed please. up. Please, no. Put that bottle down. Oh. No, don't hit me again. No, Uncle. No. And if that poor girl hadn't barricaded herself in her room so you couldn't get in, who knows what might have happened? And so, at long last, they found great pleasure in one another and repeatedly pursued the roads of satisfaction and delight. Then the young woman bethought herself of the older man who had helped her to attain this happiness without any idea of doing so. So grateful was she to him huh? that she decided to repay him in some small measure for all he had done for her. Mm. After a few weeks' thought, she finally found the way. Good morning, Monsignore. My daughter? I've planned a surprise, Monsignore. Surprise? I see I have a nice single room. Lots oh, of no, sun, no. it's so Thank bright. Thank you very much. Our room is Peter's fine. Like. Thank you. We see it from our room. Oh, no, please. You really have to. I won't permit you to go on sleeping in two like that and to sacrifice yourself because of me. Well, uh, you think we can trust him? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes, yes, I think he's finally cured. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. finally he understood, Monsignore. Mm -hmm. Thanks to you, he understood. Oh. Yes. 